Hey guys, meet Oren. Oren is one of my best friends dating from way, way back before I even went to high school. And me and him both love to pl uh, play and watch basketball. So, we started playing 2K against each other since back in 2K8. We would always ditch class, hook up an Xbox 360 in some random room, and we would play 2K8 against each other way, way back. And always, almost always, me and him would have a super close game. So, mainly because I know you guys love super close games as I throw a nice alley-oop, I decided to bring him on for a segment on my YouTube channel. Me and Oren almost always have amazingly great games and it's just all in good fun and who doesn't like really close games you tell me but um if you like this segment on my channel let me know give me the thumbs up and if you don't then well, obviously it'll be discontinued let me know in the comment section because for now this is a ranked uh, not a ranked i guess an unranked match i am the washington wizards and he is the chicago bulls he has an amazing online record as well so don't think uh because i'm outscoring him eight to two that he's garbage really don't it's just i always love talking mess uh to him about it about it in the next video there should he should have his own audio part up the reason why it wasn't up this video was because he couldn't find his headset but from now on he's gonna have his own bit you'll get to see our reactions now let me tell you the argument me and him are having against each other he's accusing me of cheesing because I am somehow cherry picking or throwing the ball up court or whatever and I want you guys to be the judge if I am cheesing then let me know if you find any of my moves cheese, then let me know. Put the time that it was a cheese maneuver in the comment section and just tell me. If you find that he is cheesing, then do the same thing for him and then accuse him of what he's doing. Like, say if, uh, say if I am cherry picking, uh, just write, this, this time you were cherry picking and then I'll go check it out because me and him are still arguing and the game came down to the wire so you know we always like talking smack about it you know but it's all in good fun but um anyways right here he's really good with using the bulls you'll uh you'll see that right here he's better with using CJ Watson than he is with Derrick Rose so that's the funny thing about this video um, you're gonna see him beasting with a lot of Bulls players and doing things you don't expect them to do. And my problem with using the Wizards is the reason I'm running the break so much is the fact that I have to run the break. That's the only way I could score with the Wizards because John Wall, their superstar player, is only rated an 81. He doesn't have the greatest uh, three-point rating. Obviously, he's not a great three-point shooter in real life, and he also. Um, He's just not that great of, doesn't have that great of iso motion moves as I get another nice alley-oop to go. And so I'm just trying to run the break whenever I can. And the one thing he does not realize is the fact that he's shooting threes on a team that's completely relying on a fast break. So that was my excuse for always running the break on him. Uh, that and the fact that it's not my fault that he doesn't know how to defend the break. But uh, again, let me know what you guys think. So right here, here's an example. Open, nice little dribble pull up, no good. So I'm running back on D. So I'm really relying on the fast break. Maybe John Wall's playmaking ability. He thinks that the, he probably thinks that I'm just gonna keep using John Wall, going to the basket and like dunking it on him like I did over there. When in reality, I just take my chances when I get them. I just take whatever comes up. You're not gonna see a lot of the James shake in here either. Now, one thing he doesn't know about is I'm amazing at defending the three. I think he's only gotten like two three-point shots off in this game and right over there there you go that was my accusation of him cheesing he was doing the charging maneuver and if you this entire game not a single charging maneuver came from my part so that was my accusation on him he uh and like that's just that over there all right there's one failure james shake but um again it's up to you guys as he gets rip hamilton he can't alley you put on me come on son Come on, what you think you're doing? I dish it to Jordan Crawford, dish it to Jay Wizzy, get a nice fast break deuce to tie the game. And um, 
If you also want me to play more rank matches, let me know because it doesn't mean I'm gonna play this, it means I'm not gonna play any more rank matches. I get another alley oop off the backboard to Joe Crow. Let's go. It's the J Wiz and J Joe Crow show. So right here, Nene passes it off to Joe Crow. Joe Crow finds Mo Evans for another nice alley oop dunk. Why don't why doesn't my team do this in my player? Like they never dunk the ball. They always have to go for the uh, settle for those layups and right here. I'm trying to D up Ronnie Brewer and he gets the shot to go. I'm calling that luck. Come on, you got this amazing Mims defense, which you think <laughs> you think you're gonna get shots off that easy. But um right here, Kevin Serafin. I'm really not good with this team at all. I just love John Wall. I think he has a lot of potential, but I'm actually worried that he might bust, and I could see him busting actually. Mainly because many people are saying he refuses to uh, translate and develop and transition, excuse me, transition is the word I was looking for, into the NBA game. And once you refuse, once there's the, that word refusal and just not willing to work on certain aspects on your game, then honestly, and there he goes again with the cheese charge and I'm going to punish him right here. Come on, man. You really going to expect me not to take that? You cheese charging right there. So, um, and, like seriously, I'm a YouTube commentator. I do this. Like, you can't do that on me. But, um, like I was saying, I'm really worried John Wall could bust. And honestly, who isn't, uh, like, who wouldn't be worried? If I was a Wizards fan, I'd be worried too. Part of it could be because of his coaching. You know, Andrew Bynum didn't become a beast until Phil Jackson left and Darvin Ham worked on, uh, worked with him. But that only coaching is so, like, such a small thing to blame it on. You know, there's so much more to a player's development besides coaching. So, honestly, I think if he develops a jumper and limits his turnovers, he definitely could be better than Derrick Rose. The athleticism is much better than Derrick Rose, if you ask me. He is much faster than Derrick Rose. That's like another nice alley-oop to Kevin Serafin. I don't know if I said that right, but whatever. And right here, quick hands with Rip Hamilton. But um, again, let me know what you guys think about Jay Wiz because he's one of my favorite players. The potential is really there. And I wouldn't call him a bust yet. A bust, in my definition, is a player that offers very little to no productivity. You know, like a, like Kwame, well, we could say Kwame Brown obviously is a bust, but very little to no productivity, meaning like a one-dimensional player. He's good coming off the bench for small, specific situations, stuff like that. That's my definition of a bust. For example, Kwame Brown, all he's good for is defense. But um, as we get into the last three minutes of the game, right here as... I don't know if it's James or Chris Singleton. I think it's James. I don't know. Oh, Chris Singleton. Never mind. It's Chris Singleton. Gets the final. Sh uh, gets those free throws to go, and he runs up court with D Rose. There's no stopping that. Come on. I altered his shot. Like there really is no stopping that. And he gets that Rip Hamilton three. And again, he doesn't realize I'm amazing at defending the three. And then he tries to do some. I thought he was going for the alley oop over there, so I was getting ready to defend the oop. So he's up by one. There's two minutes to go. And I'm trying to make a play with Jay Wiz. And I see Cartier Martin wide open for the three. And I go up by two. And I think that's one of my few threes in this game. Usually I dominate teams with three point shooting. And again, I see Jan Vesely, but I don't oop it. He was expecting an oop. If you go back, you saw Luol Deng reach for it. And I take a three with Joe Crow. Let's go. My boy Jordan Crawford. I was hoping that the Lakers drafted him back in that draft, but whatever. Uh, Carlos Boozer gets the rebound, and Rip Hamilton gets a three. They're down by two. Oh, no, that was only a two. So uh, Jordan Crawford, I think, has a lot of potential to be something great. And I'm a player that's really big on the draft, so you're always going to hear me talk about young players. As I throw a terrible pass, Luol Deng gets the break, and I should have. I was lucky that wasn't called for a foul. That would have been a really dumb play, but thank God it wasn't. So there you go, Luol Deng. Uh, he's using Luol Deng to cheese me in the backcourt, and I'm thinking, why would you do that? I get the nice little connection with, I think that was Trevor Booker. If not, maybe Kevin Serafin, but 
Anyways, he's running up with Derek Rose. I don't think he subbed him out this half, and that's going to kind of bite him right here because, look, he's all tired. Look at me defending the pass perfectly, and Derek Rose trying to take it in. And that maneuver, I think, is kind of cheese. The whole hop step thing, I defended it perfectly. There's nothing else I could do. It might be the equivalent to the Euro step. You guys watch my videos. I don't normally do that. This is something I normally do. I go into the, I drive towards baseline and I wait for the power forward to cut and then I pass it to him. That's one of my moves I frequently do. And right here, ding up Derrick Rose, not letting him drive so often. Well, over there, Rick, Richard Hamilton got the drive, but he kind of pulled off a little bit of a Martel Webster move right there. He goes for the quick two, and he's depending on my free throw shooting. And again, he goes for another quick two by Derrick Rose, and I got lucky over there that it didn't get fouled. And again, he depends on my free throw shooting. So he's just whittling time down for himself because I think if I think he should just go for the three straight up. And he brings in Kyle Korver. I give him props for that one. But I think Luol Deng would have been a better option because he's stepping up this year. Maybe 2K would give him a bit better of a favor. But this shot I don't agree with. I've been digging up the three and, and he just launched a contestant to me. And I beat him with the Washington Wizards. So tell me, who do you think cheesed more? And if you do think we cheesed, tell me what parts we did because he's not leaving me alone about this. He's not giving me props for my W. Come on, man. I've just beat you with the second worst team in NBA 2K12. And let me know what team I should use next when I play Orin. And if you think I should continue this segment, also let me know because I had a lot of fun doing this. And I think he'd really like to get his own segment as well. Um, if you like this video, please thumbs it up. Obviously, you know, I, I love the thumbs. Helps me out a lot. And enjoy the rest of Jay Wizzy's highlights. Uh, it's your boy Mims, and I'm out. Peace. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to start tweeting whenever I want to play 2K against a follower. So be on the lookout for that if you guys are following me on Twitter. And shout-outs to Mellow for the beat. Peace.